Hi. Um, I've noticed that this uh, new development with language like safe spaces, for instance, and trigger warnings has taken on a different kind of jargon than previous revolutionary movements. It's really therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And it's operating on an emotional level. And it seems to be resonating with kids even at the high school elementary level. I, I, I try to talk to my nieces and nephews. It's really evident. There doesn't seem to be a foothold for a logical conversation to happen yes. because emotions seem to completely fill the void. If, uh, you seem to agree with that. So totally. what, what do you think is creating that environment? Because where I'm seeing it, it's a very difficult thing to even have a conversation. Yeah. I mean, what's creating the environment of, of feelings is, is basically that we're the most prosperous nation in the history of humanity. So, I mean, if you've ever dealt with kids of very wealthy parents, very often they tend to be oversensitive and easily offended. And, and, when, and these are the kids of wealthy parents, namely the United States. And so what are they going to complain about? The fact that they're poor, they're not poor. The fact that they have a rough life, they don't. So what exactly is going to be their world-beating change? And there's nothing more empowering to these kids than saying, the change that you seek is about you. Right? It's not even about the society at large, it's about you. Because your feelings are now our gauge of success or failure as a society. I mean, that's a pretty empowering message. I mean, it's almost a, it's, it's almost a bizarre leftist incarnation of Walt Whitman's I Contain Multitudes. You know, what happens to me is what happens to all of society. My feelings matter than anything else in the, more than anything else in the universe. Which is why, by the way, when you do argue with kids who are into this sort of stuff, it is imperative to actually use emotional argument. You know, logic does not work. And... That doesn't mean that you have to make false arguments, but you can say you're being a fascist little... <laughs> right? And that's okay. Because the reality is they are being fascist little. And so that's, that's okay. And, and the reason that is because what they're really doing, what, 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 kid, what the left now does, is they make emotionally based arguments about your character. You're a bad person, right? The, 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 the safe space argument, the microaggression argument, isn't that you're even saying something untrue. It's that you are a bad human being. And the only way to defeat you're a bad human being in an argument is to say, no, actually, you're a bad human being for suggesting that I'm a bad human being without evidence. Only a jerk does that. Right? And then once we get beyond the character arguments, then we can argue about logic. But if it's going to be character arguments all the way to the well, then there's no way to beat a character argument with a logical argument. Mitt Romney discovered this in 2012. Right? You cannot make a logical argument and win people over while your opponent is saying that you kill people of cancer. Right? I mean, the, which was the actual argument against Mitt Romney. He fired people so that later their wives would die of cancer. This is the Obama campaign, and Mitt Romney's campaign was, that guy's incompetent. Okay, that's not, so who are you going to vote for? The guy who kills people of cancer with his magic Wall Street powers? Or the guy who's mildly incompetent? Right? So it, character arguments do matter. And this is why I encourage conservatives to see the world as it is, not as we wish it to be. Logical arguments are not going to defeat the safe space microaggression mentality. The only thing that defeats that is showing these kids that what they are doing is actually immoral. It's not just ineffective, it's not just counterproductive, it's immoral. It is immoral to call the police if someone hurts your feelings. It makes you a bad human being if you call the police because somebody hurt your feelings. It makes you a fascist thug who wants to use a gun against someone. And when you speak to them like that, at least you can embarrass them enough for just a moment that maybe there's a gap. I'm going to ask a question on behalf of my daughter and son-in-law. Um, we were visiting them. He's in the military. Uh, well, thank you. Over, uh, over Christmas, and he asked the question, we have four kids, homeschooled, should we be saving money to send them to college? You've described a situation. He seems to sense that this is maybe not uh, a good place for his kids, but on the other hand, college served him well, uh, his wife. So would you please respond? So you have to gauge your own kids. I think it's a different, listen, I went to UCLA, I went to Harvard Law. There are no two more liberal institutions, leftists. I don't like the word liberal, they're not liberals, they're leftists. There are no two more leftist individuals, institutions on the planet than UCLA and Harvard Law School. I came out a stronger conservative because I used everything that I was learning as a, as a, a starter. It wasn't the end point, right? It was, okay, you want me to read John Rawls? Okay, well now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna read Frederick Hayek, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna read various perspectives on the same issue so that I know how to counter the argument. So I can argue leftist positions better than most leftists can. Right? So, the, the, so if, you, if you have somebody who's a solid conservative, what I say to parents is about college, if your kid is not a solid conservative, if your kid doesn't have solid values by the time they're 18, be a, they'll be a leftist by the time they're 21. That's the way that this works. 
ever, all your heavy lifting is done before the college years. So you sort of have to, I, I mean, honestly, I think that if your kid isn't solidly in, in, ensconced in values before they hit puberty, you're in trouble. <laughs> Uh, so it's, so this is this is a long pro as someone with a with a two year old daughter and a son on the way. I mean, this is something I'm going to have to work on. It's it's something that you know I think that you have to gauge this. So what I say to college students who are really politically motivated is go to leftist campuses, go to leftist campuses, learn how to hone your arguments, become a weapon. And what that and what I also tell them is if you're going to be on a leftist campus, don't be stupid. If the professor is going to grade you down for being conservative in class, write like a communist. I mean, this is actually what I did when I was at UCLA. I'd argue with the professor in class, and then we had things called blue books, and blue books were great because they were anonymous. They just used your student ID number. And so if you read my actual essays from college, they read like something directly out of the nation. And if, and if you, you know, and obviously that's not what I think, but that's how you get to graduate summa cum laude at UCLA, go to Harvard Law School, and then use all their degrees against them. So. <laughs>